This podcast of the hour is brought to you by the new Alexander Keith's Red Amber Ale. That's an incredible story. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen. Please welcome uh, Mr. Warren McDonald. How are you? Good to see you. Um, I suspect, you know, I mean, the book is a test of, well, one man's extraordinary story of survival. It certainly is that. Uh, if people are, I mean, they just saw the, the, the video of you there, that, what you went through. Yep. I mean, tell us, what happened? How did this accident happen? What happened? Wrong place, wrong time. Uh, Which really sucks, man, because <laughs> to be so random like that. Yeah, well, life can be random. It, but, but literally, that's what it was. I was on the side of a mountain, uh, climbing a peak with a guy I'd just met the day before. And literally, I was climbing out of a gully to take a leak, trying to do the right thing and get as far away as from our water supply as I could. A big piece of rock peels off, mm -hmm. lands in my lap. You know, it, uh, but good luck and bad luck sometimes come hand in hand because uh, you know, I was obviously pretty lucky that it didn't land up on my, on my waist and yeah. I wouldn't be sitting here today. You'd be gone. I mean, yeah. when you say a, a big piece of rock fell, like what's, what's, what, how what's quick big? is that? Uh, like that. Do you, do you hear a noise? Do you wonder what it is? And yeah, I heard a I heard a crack, and the next split second's totally gone. It's just absolutely gone from memory. Next thing I knew, I was just slam into the creek bed with just this incredible weight well, grinding the, the thing in my that, legs. If that isn't enough, I mean, the amount of time you spent pinned under this rock is mm. incredible. Yeah, yeah, the best part of two days. So, 45 hours or so, you're yeah. pinned under this rock a lot, and you're in the wild. A lot can happen yeah. to you. Yeah, a lot can happen. Uh, yeah, a hell of a lot can happen. I thought I was going to drown at first. I fell. Was the water rising? Yeah, exactly. Well, when I fell, I fell with my backside barely touching the water in the creek. It starts raining, and it's, we're in the tropics. Mm -hmm. So when it rains, it really rains. And within an hour and a half, I've got a raging, flooding creek up around my waist thinking, wow, this is, uh, this is grim. I don't know how, if I'm going to come out of this. I read this, and I have to exp you have to explain this to, to us because the idea of a lobster mm -hmm. is eating at the, your dying legs. Yeah, yeah, not happy. Okay, how does that? What is that? Tell me that. Well, I because I well, I'll tell you what I tried to do. When you when you're stuck under a rock like that, you want to you want time. You want to will time right. forward. You, you don't want to be there. So I tried to sleep as much as I could. And, and eventually I was lapsing in and out of consciousness, I think. Mm -hmm. So they tell me. And at one point I just looked up and I saw a pool of blood around my right foot and just thought, that's weird, that wasn't there before. It's a little late to start bleeding now. Yeah. And next thing I see this nipper come up out of the water. I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. And yeah, had got a, a, basically got a stick and just started spearing at this guy and you know, trying to take him out. Because I couldn't believe the cheek of this guy to, <laughs> to come and start chewing on me like that when there was literally there was nothing I could do. I wonder when you look back now, yep. I mean, what do you think about that time? What do I think about it? I, do you know, for a long time, well, let's put it this way, a good friend of mine lost a leg and, and used to say that it was the best thing that ever happened to him. Yep. And I'm like, well, 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 I don't think so. Now, I'm a realist, I'll deal with what's happened to me. But in the last couple of years, I've come to the point where I've realised that if I could turn the clock back now, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't. Why not? Because I've come too far and learnt too much, in, in a nutshell. What was that moment like when you woke up and went, I, no, this is me, this is who I am now? In a way, it was pretty liberating, in a, in a way, to get to that point, you know? And, and it was an amazing process to go through because I got to the point where... Navigating life without legs isn't a big deal at all for me. You know, it's, well, I sort of hesitate to say this, but in some ways it's, it can be pretty easy. You know, anybody that's gone shopping with me in a supermarket will tell you that a wheelchair is pretty quick zipping around. You've got a basket underneath, you're just grabbing stuff and throwing it under the chair. And so when you, when you get your systems in place and you learn how to navigate life in a different way, that becomes the non-issue. And it's the things that you've learned about yourself and, and just life and the universe and everything else in general that I, I wouldn't change that now. How would you characterize your life before the accident versus now? Before, uh, before I wasn't so conscious of time. I, I, I always subscribe to that idea that we can pretty much create whatever we want, yeah. but I've al I was always happy to come up with an idea and go, yeah, I want to do that, and then just put it over there for a couple of years while I just, you know, bummed around and, you know, in Africa or, or you know, on the barrier reef or wherever. Like you were a wandering man, right? You just kind of lived yeah. your life. 
Yeah, exactly. I just went from one place. I always, I always felt uh, kind of restless and always needed some kind of challenge. And, and maybe in, in some ways I still do in a sense, I think, just mm -hmm. in a different kind of way. But, uh, yeah, I, I definitely became more focused and more aware that, hey, we're on, this, we're on this planet for a limited amount of time and it's best we get on with it once we figure out what we want to do. Well, you're an outdoorsy guy, but you didn't really become a mountain climber until the accident. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's, I've, look, I've tried to ice climb before, and uh, yeah. I can't do it. It's hard. I mean, is well, it? I'm sure you can. Well, but, yeah, five but, feet, <laughs> right? And, but I wonder for you, if, if, if you looked at this and said, okay, this is where I am now. I'm now yeah. going to, I'm going to do something I never did before, like yeah. that process. And that's exactly how it happened. The first time I went back out, it was, uh, it was about reclaiming something that, that I thought I'd lost. Mm -hmm. And then once I had that back, then the little wheels start turning and you think, hmm, okay, I wonder if I could do something, you know, that I'd been planning before and I had to go about it a different way. And once I'd done that, then the lid was just blown open. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, well, what does this mean? What does it mean to, to, to go through life with no legs and where's, where are the boundaries? Where are the limits? You know, you, you've done way more dangerous stuff since your accident than you did before. Yeah, so my mum keeps reminding me. Yeah. Yeah. You ever have a morning and go, oh, I can't, what am I doing here? Um, uh, not so much. I'm more blown away by the fact that I'm, that I'm there. Yeah. You know, there was one, one of the, when we shot that ice climbing film, we had lunch in behind a curtain of ice and just, and that, that really hit me. It's like, wow, we're sitting, we're in a little cave on the side of a mountain behind a frozen waterfall. Now, as an Australian, I find that quite bizarre. Well, I mean, when you're doing that, the weeping wall, when you're ice climbing that, you've got this technology, you've got these clamp-ons, you've got a real, yeah. like you, I mean, you've got a lot of new stuff that you can play with. Yeah, which is uh, part of Animal Part Machine, the name of the film came from. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah, and that's been, real, that's been really cool, being involved in that, just going to some of these guys that are at the forefront of prosthetics and saying, I want to do this. And you'll see, they'll just get that look. They're like, what do you want to do that for? Well, I think I can. You know, can you make me the, the, the feet for it? Well, let's, have, you know, let's, let's check it out. And, so, and then, then seeing... Well, I got to, well, I got to tell you one thing. The, the, those ice climbing feet that I use, I haven't yet seen another guy with no legs above the knee yeah. take those on, but I'm hanging out for the day, you know, because I'd hate to think that they're a one-shot deal. I wonder if when you're climbing a mountain, when other climbers go by you, what they, when they look at you, what do they say? What's that, what's that <laughs> moment like when they go? Or when you pass them, yeah. what that moment's like? There's, uh, well, there's some double takes, let's put it that way. <laughs> I, probably one of the best ones was coming down from, uh, oh, sorry, we're on the way up, uh, going up Kilimanjaro. Yeah. And we took a route that was so steep, the only other people using it are coming down, being rescued, altitude sickness. And I, now remember, I climbed Kilimanjaro with a guy with no arms. So how happy do you think those, those guys were being rescued? They're in stretches, right? They look up and they see a guy with no arms charging up the mountain, then they see me behind. I'm telling you, some of them were, were just, they were climbing out of their stretches. Going, I'm going I'm back okay, up. I'm OK, I'm OK, I want to go back up. So, so yeah, you get some interesting reactions. What's the one thing you left you have to climb? Do you have one? The, not really. Everybody keeps asking me when I'm yeah. going to climb Everest. And as I keep saying, I want to do something original. <laughs> you know? Everyone seems to want to climb Everest these days, but no, I'm just having... in a city for a winter. That's an accomplishment. Yeah, there's, yeah, exactly. There's going outside your comfort zone. But no, I'm just happy to get out and do stuff. It's called the test of will. It's Warren McDonald. Thanks a lot, man. Cool. Great to have you on the program. Warren McDonald, the test of will, is in the book. You can go check out more about it. Lots more coming on the hour tonight. So, please, come right back.